Hey everybody, it's Terry. Welcome back to the workshop. Today we're going to talk about the F-15 Eagle from E-Flight. This is a sports scale model of the full scale jet fighter that's been around for decades. And if you've ever wanted a downsized F-15 of your own, but you're intimidated because you thought it would be too complex or too difficult to fly, then turn up your speakers and scoop closer to the screen. You'll want to hear about this one because this F-15 has features that are intended to make things easier for modelers who aren't used to building or flying fast pointy airplanes. So stay tuned and I'll tell you all about it. Let's start off by talking about some of the things that make this airplane simple. The airframe is made of molded foam and it comes factory painted in this trim scheme. Even most of the decals are already applied for you. There are a few basic assembly steps, but they're very simple and easy to do. So you shouldn't have any trouble with that. The kit includes foam fuel tanks and missiles that snap into the wings. They're easy to install or remove without any tools. Personally, I prefer the look of the airplane without this stuff. Now let's look at the landing gear. While the landing gear is not retractable, it is removable. So those of you that fly off of grass fields can take off the landing gear and you're good to go for hand launches and belly landings. And even if you do have access to a paved runway, you might want to keep the landing gear off simply because it gives the airplane a cleaner look in the sky. But with all that being said, it really only takes a minute or two to install or remove the landing gear, so you don't really have to make a commitment, you can just change your mind on the fly. One of the primary elements of this model's simplicity is the power system. While there are two air inlets and two exhausts, just like on the real F-15, this model is powered by a single brushless motor attached to a 64mm fan unit. There's also a 40 amp speed control included. Using a single fan instead of two smaller ones cuts down on the number of electronic components that you need, it reduces the moving parts that are inside the airplane, and it also streamlines the necessary wiring. And since the one fan unit provides more than enough power for this model, there's really no trade-off to be considered. It's a win-win situation. This F-15 is designed to use a 4-cell, 2200 milliamp hour LiPo battery. These types of batteries are very popular, so they're easy to find and inexpensive. Specifically, I'm using a Conexus F-Tech battery with a 40C discharge rate. Let's take a moment to talk about the control system. The kit includes five Spectrum submicro servos. There's a servo on each of the ailerons. There's also a servo for each elevator half. The fifth servo controls the nose wheel steering. On the flight control surfaces, each of the push rods are short and strong, and they have simple control connections. So there's very little slop there. Things are a little bit different, however, on the nose wheel steering. Here we have a tiller arm that interfaces with a slotted control horn. And in the stock configuration, there was very little movement. In fact, I was unable to turn the F-15 around, even on the full width of my club's paved runway. So to correct that, I repositioned the servo 180 degrees so that the output shaft was closer to the tiller arm. And this allowed me to shorten the tiller arm. And this modification made the F-15 much more nimble on the ground. With the recommended battery placed completely aft in the battery compartment, the F-15 balance is a little bit nose heavy. It can be flown this way, but I do not recommend it because you lose elevator authority at low speed and you may not be able to flare for landing. So I would definitely suggest that you balance the airplane at the location noted in the manual. Balancing the F-15 can be a little bit tricky and that's because of the number of ways that you can set up the airplane. As I mentioned before, you can choose to fly with or without the landing gear. And also there's a variety of batteries that can be used, including three cell 2200 milliamp hour packs. And each of those configurations requires a different amount of tail weight to get the airplane to balance correctly. To address this complication, I made it easy to adjust the amount of tail weight on the model. First, I added small strips of 1 32nd inch plywood to either side of the tail surfaces. Then I took a few standard quarter ounce weights and I drilled a 3 32nd inch diameter hole through the middle of each of them. This allows me to run a number two screw through the weight and into the plywood. And now I can have anywhere from one to four quarter ounce weights on the tail of the airplane, depending on the configuration of the model. And a little bit of white paint on all the parts helps it all blend in. Now let's talk about how the F-15 flies. I mentioned before that it has features which are meant to help pilots who are just stepping into the world of scale jets. Specifically, I'm talking about safe stabilization. And if you buy the bind and fly version of the F-15 like I have here, it comes with a receiver that is already equipped with safe. And safe does a few things for you. First of all, it auto levels the airplane when you release the sticks. Additionally, it provides pitch and bank limits that will prevent you from getting the airplane into a bad attitude. And all of that removes a lot of the variables when you're just getting used to flying a fast mover like this. SAFE will also desensitize the controls quite a bit. 
you'll find that it takes really large control inputs just to get the F-15 around the pattern. And that can be a little bit disconcerting for pilots who are already used to the fine nuanced control inputs that are normally required for this kind of airplane. For those pilots, I can assure you that the Eagle is very responsive and aerobatic as soon as you turn off safe. When you initially bind the model, you have the option of disabling safe completely. However, I recommend that you set it up so that you can turn safe on or off with the two position switch on your transmitter. My reason for that is that safe makes this model super easy to hand launch. All you have to do is enable safe, give the airplane full throttle, and then throw it forward with a reasonable toss. Safe will ensure that the model departs with the wings level, giving you plenty of time to get your hands back on the sticks. And you can then turn off safe and go tear up the sky. Although this F-15 does not have rudders, it is capable of an impressive range of aerobatics. Loops and rolls and inverted flight are just at the top of that list. The fan unit provides a good mix of climbing power and top speed, but don't feel like you have to fly at full throttle all the time. I found that this airplane cruises nicely even at partial throttle settings. I have my flight timer set for 3 minutes, and when that timer goes off, that's my cue to start setting up an approach for landing. If you're more consistently heavy on the throttle, you might want to come in sooner than that. But either way, make sure you give yourself enough time and airspace to set up a good approach. This airplane is surprisingly slippery and retains energy well, but with a well-planned approach, the landings are really easy. This wraps up my overview of the F-15 Eagle from eFlight. I'll close things out with a little bit more flight footage. Also, be sure to check out the written review in Model Aviation Magazine. Thanks for watching.